All right, so I want to show you the difference between the Kubernetes Cluster Autoscaler and Carpenter, the new autoscaler that we just launched at AWS. Uh, so let's pretend that this is one of your nodes, right? Like, it holds some capacity, and I have this workload that came in, right? So in a normal Kubernetes cluster with Cluster Autoscaler, I don't need the Cluster Autoscaler to schedule a, no a pod to a node, right? Like, it just, Kubernetes does that, right? The scheduler can do that for me, uh, and I, you know, put some more workloads in there. And un until I get to the point where it's like, oh, you know what? Like, that node's at capacity. For whatever level of capacity I say, that's capacity. So a new workload comes in, whether it's a you know brand new job or it's the pod scale up, whatever it is, uh, but it won't fit anymore into this node. So the cluster autoscaler sees this unschedulable pod and says, okay, we need to add one more because that's, we know that this will fit on another one and, and we have this node group set up ahead of time. And so the cluster autoscaler just boop, puts in another one and we can schedule our pod. And essentially that's what's working. And, and it just keeps scaling these up as many times as it wants. And if we have something that say later on, we get some like larger workloads and, and they don't really fit on these small instance types anymore. So we're like, well, let's, let's just get the next bigger size, right? Like let's just get a different instance type. And, and we can schedule it to that. And now you have the cluster autoscaler watching two node groups. It has a small one that it, it says, oh, if jobs fit on here, I'm gonna create small nodes. And if I have big workloads, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna, if they don't fit on the small ones, I'll go ahead and you know scale it up and, and create more of these large nodes. And that's a node group essentially with cluster autoscaler. Uh, so Carpenter's a little different though. Carpenter can still scale up the cluster for you based on pods, but it actually looks at the nodes them, or the pods themselves and says, what does that pod need? What is it that the pod's asking for requests? And then how can I best fit that to an instance? And so it's a little bit different. So let's say we have these different workloads, right? This workload comes in and these workloads need ARM processors for whatever reason, right? Like you, as your cluster gets bigger and bigger, you're gonna get larger jobs, right? Like, these are your Nginx pods that just no one actually uses. And this is actually a useful, like maybe a, a Node.js backend or something, right? So like in this case, we, need, we want an ARM processor for whatever reason, but my cluster autoscaler is only set to scale these little nodes that have x86 CPU. But with Carpenter, I can keep this node around, right? Like I don't actually set up a node pool. This is just, okay, there's a, a node in my cluster, that's fine. And then I'm gonna create these new, ARM instance types for these ARM workloads. The workload itself said, I want an ARM CPU, and the cluster admin didn't have to do anything. The cluster admin didn't go out and create a node group and then update the cluster, the cluster autoscaler and say, okay, here's a new node group, you have to scale whenever it requests. Uh, it just does that. Carpenter looks at the workload itself and says, okay, how do we want to scale that best? And so how does this look at a, even a larger scale at a production level cluster? So. Uh, here, let's zoom out a little bit, and and I have wait. Here's my auto. Here's my my zones. Right, this is a production cluster. Right, so I have high availability. So uh, I'm gonna have some nodes in each cluster, and and let's say I have cluster autoscaler. So I have some of the medium types and some of the small ones. And under the covers, these are just autoscaling groups. So the autoscaling group is responsible for actually spreading that load between the different zones, however many zones I set up in the autoscaling group. And so whenever Kubernetes is scheduling pods, you can have some taints and tolerations based on what zones you want them in uh, to add some spread. But in general, you might get, whoops, crash loop back. Uh, you might get some some spread that you don't necessarily want in, in every case. Because you don't have direct control over those EC2 instance types. And that's all the cluster autoscaler is just going out to the autoscaling group and saying, hey, plus one or plus two, right? However many pending pods I have, that's how many more I need. Hold on one sec, the trash is coming. I'm gonna pause this and come back. Okay, so you might notice 
in the cluster right now, we actually have three node groups. We have the very, really small ones that really only hold the Nginx pods. Uh, we have the medium sized ones, which can hold some more workloads. And then we have our ARM instances, which gets spread out again through the cluster autoscaler adding one to the autoscaling group. And, and this mapping you have to manage, right? So every time you add a, a node group, you have to go into the cluster autoscaler and tell it, okay, I need, here's my new node group. Here's how you scale it. Here's some weights on it. All that sort of stuff you configure because of this mapping between something that's Kubernetes native and AWS native. Uh, and then when a new unschedulable pod comes in to play, it's, it's you know, here in the scheduler, what do we do? Uh, in this case, you know, if it's an ARM instance, I can the scheduler can place it, right? I have an open, I have an open pod there. Uh, but maybe this one needs like a GPU, and so if I want to add a GPU to this cluster, I have to go and create the node group. I have to tell the autoscaler about it. I have to set it so that you know the tags are properly. It scales to zero if I'm not using it, uh, and then magically I could get this GPU instance uh, for all that work. And it's, it's kind of a pain. Um, but with Carpenter, again, it looks at the workload itself. And there's no node groups in Carpenter. So we have, we're, we're talking directly to EC2. We can put things directly in a zone that we want. Uh, we don't have to wait for like a round robin of plus one instances. We can just say, hey, EC2, give me that instance in that zone. I want GPU in zone one. And it's done. And that's all I have to worry about. So Carpenter is is more of a native Kubernetes workload scheduler uh, for how we get nodes. And because I don't have any node groups, all of these different sizes, this, this heterogeneous cluster we have here, doesn't actually matter. Uh, once we say we got enterprise workloads, right? Like, like here's my Java app that came in and said, hey, I can't, I don't fit on any of these nodes. Again, cluster autoscaler, I gotta go set up a node group. With Carpenter, I just pick a bigger instance type, okay and we'll put it in a zone. And of course, those don't scale horizontally. We have a few vertical ones, so you know, we, can, we can put them in there. Um, but it also helps, Carpenter can help with like, the crazy scale up attempts of saying like, hey, uh, I have 100 new pods. Where do I put these 100 pods? Cluster Autoscaler can do the math and say, okay, what's the request? Uh, if it's maybe say this size, I can make however many, you know, 50 of these all at once and, and just tell the autoscaling group, okay, this is the math I did for memory and what needs to fit, so I need 50 of them. But in Carpenter, I can just say, actually what I need, I could deal with one. I, like, this is fine. Like, I can, here you go. Let's just schedule. There you go, we're done. We just scheduled, scheduled everything. Obviously, on the pods themselves, you can set if you need zonal constraints, if you want a certain instance type. All that stuff comes with Carpenter that we don't necessarily get with Cluster Autoscaler without pre-configuring the autoscaler. And so in this mode, the Carpenter, it does a lot of other things too, like uh, time to live for an instance type to say like, oh, you've been around for a day, so you need to be cycled out. Let's replace you with a fresh one. Um, those all come with Carpenter as well to help you get things that are more native uh, in AWS in the auto scaling groups, but now native in Kubernetes based on the workloads. So in this case, Carpenter's kind of a lot different. Uh, and there's a lot of things that we can do here because provider or provisioners are set up in cluster and we can have multiple provisioners. So it's a really cool project. I think you should check it out and I hope you enjoyed the video.